Okay. Welcome everyone. So I have the honor and the pleasure to introduce um, Angela and Matthew tonight. Angela is an activist and a somatic therapist, trauma treatment and addiction specialist who specializes um, in individual and group therapy practice. She trained in Gestalt, Body Centered and Somatic Therapy at Esalen Institute, Counseling Psychology at the Wright Institute, which are both not that far from here, and is both an instructor and practitioner of BRIMA and a practitioner of EMDR. Facilitating the connection between body and mind is the basis of her work. And um, Matthew, Toussignan holds degrees from Harvard University and the California Institute of Integral Studies. A certified BRIMA practitioner and instructor, he teaches BRIMA extensively in the US and Europe. His body-centered therapeutic work combines the universal wisdom of BRIMA with the practical knowledge of psychology to connect others to their unique potential as human beings. So having said that, I will leave the floor to Angela and Matthew. Thank you so much for being here tonight. It's such an honor to have you here. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, I just want to, I'm so glad that, that uh, we get to do this tonight. And um, I just want to make sure that everyone knows that we're going to be moving around that this is a somatic workshop and so we'll be doing a lot of body-based activities and that it'll be really important for you to <clears throat> to stay connected to your own body comfortable so one of the principles that we work with in the practice of Brima is body comfortable and this means that I, I wish to, to everything that I do within the the limit and comfort of my own body's ability and maybe plus one percent so if there's something that you need to adjust or one that you need to just sit out on um, do that be comfortable and really just uh, try to, to enjoy and relax and enjoy it because um, um, really con body mind connection um, and this practice of being present is, is really all about enjoying life in a body. So we're going to start with uh, body-centered meditation. <clears throat> so wherever you are, going to ask you to bring your body, just the attention of your mind back to the activity of the body and experience the inhalation and exhalation. So really this is so, so, so simple. It's just, it starts with a little attention of asking the mind to come back. However your body's breathing, doesn't matter. The mind is following inhaling and exhaling. And as I do this, as I allow my body to simply breathe as it wishes, I ask the mind to remain with that activity. Allowing the shoulders to drop or loosen and to begin to feel the weight of the body supported by the chair or the floor. It's simply body's breathing. And body has weight supported by the floor. And notice wherever your hands are resting, as if you were inhaling into the hands, into the fingers, and exhaling down and out through the feet, relaxing the hands. Letting go of any tension that you don't need in this moment. And letting go 
and letting go often means just including, just including myself exactly as I am in this moment. And I'm with the inhalation and the exhalation. And now moving down to the feet, experiencing the feet wherever they're resting in contact with the floor under the body. Go ahead and giving the toes a little wiggle and letting go of any tension I don't need in the feet, relaxing the small muscles in the toes. And experiencing there is a body. This body's sitting, this body's breathing, and this body has weight supported by the floor. And now giving the body a slight rocking motion side to side or front to back. Experiencing the weight shifting. Body has movement. And letting the mind just rest in the rhythm of the body shifting from the left to the center and back to the right. I don't need to grip, I don't need to, to hold on to the mind because the mind is with me. I, I, I simply am just body is breathing and the weight is shifting. Now coming back to center and experiencing the inhalation on the upper half of the body. And now experiencing the effect of the exhalation on the lower part of the body. And now just simply experiencing the effect of breathing on the whole body. You don't have to do it right, you don't have to do it well. Your body is breathing, and I know this, simply by experiencing, allowing myself to just be here with the body, with the breath, and the weight of the body supported by the floor. Letting everything else go for a few seconds. Now bringing the body into just a slightly more upright but comfortable sitting position. Just one with a little more alertness. Registering that I have a wish for myself to benefit tonight. And a wish for the benefit of all. And then at the sound of the gong, uh, slowly open your eyes. Again, thank you for being here. It's a, it's a little strange still sitting in my living room and looking at myself on the screen and saying thank you for being here, but um, thank you for being here. And uh, before we get physical, I just wanted to um, take a minute and say a little bit about why we're doing this workshop tonight, why I'm doing this workshop. Um, I met the East Point Peace Academy a few years ago, 
and and I and I understood that the focus of the academy is on Kingian uh, nonviolence, social justice, and um, restorative justice, and the whole process of truth and reconciliation, and nonviolent action. And actually, from a very early point in my life, I um, have been interested in Dr. King and and and. and that Yes. I'm really sorry to interrupt you. Um, some people have a hard time hearing you. Would you mind speaking just a tad louder? Oh, you know what? Let me come a little bit closer. Thank you so much. Sorry to you. How, how is that now? Is that good? Okay. Um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so I was just saying, I'm very interested in, 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 in Kingian nonviolence. Um, and I, 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 I have this wish to understand really how it is that someone can, um, how he could do what he did, stand in the face of so much opposition and still be a standing for something but not against anyone. And um, in, in 1991, I had the, I had the opportunity to, to, to directly study this myself. I, I, after the events of 9-11, um, I went on with a group of people, a cross-country uh, peace walk from Berkeley to Washington, D.C. And um, it, took, uh, it took nine months. And, uh, and while it was a peace walk, it certainly um, there was no absence of conflict there, and what I what I what I began to understand after that walk, and what I'm still studying and trying to understand today, <clears throat> is that peace actually isn't the absence of conflict, or it's not merely the absence of conflict, and that this whole. Uh, this whole posture of us against them, me against you, sometimes me against myself, mind and my feelings fragmented and, and in conflict with each other, conflict in the world that um, this is only one dimension of human possibility and that, um, and then that, that is probably uh, one of the lowest dimensions of human possibility even though it's one that we, we find ourselves often engaging on. I often find myself engaging here. Um, what I understood too from that, from that cross country walk about Dr. King was that uh, the only possibility for understanding or being able to stand uh, for something without being against something else had to come from a place of unity. And, and, and that meant uh, being unified in oneself. And, and, and this for me is what the practice of Brima is all about. It's all about uh, becoming unified in myself so I can actually participate in life in moments from that place of being unified. And that, that unity in myself, the, the unification of the body, the mind and the feelings begins with bringing the body and the mind together. And so in Brima, we talk about just moving from one center of myself, either just my mind, just my feelings, or just my body. I might be active, but in, in the practice of Brima, we call this passivity because um, I'm fragmented. And uh, Matthew's going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. But, but really, as soon as I begin to move in the direction of bringing body and mind together, um, immediately I move from being passive or what I call reactivism more to what we call an active state where I'm, rather than just reacting to the events of life as they come to me I actually have a choice I can see them and I can see how I am in them and I have the possibility of moving from a center of gravity where I can act rather than just react and so that's, that's what we're going to be working with tonight bringing the body and mind together so thanks for being here. Matthew? Yeah. Um, 
Thank you, Angela. And as well, I'm just so grateful to be with all of you tonight and to topic, which is of such interest to me. Um, in many ways, I've been an activist my whole life, although um, my definition of that has changed quite a bit over many years. It really began when I was quite young and I recognized that there was something not quite right about the world that was in front of me. And um, I got into environmental activism, but very soon I got disillusioned with that because of that same thing that Angela was mentioning. It was this us versus them. And um, I wasn't satisfied with that, but that desire for change and for being uh, an agent of change in some way wouldn't let me go because I still kept seeing there's something that needs to be addressed. And that led me on quite a journey. But um, there was one experience that touched me in that whole process where I got a taste or an experience of what Angela was talking about. I came to a, a more unified place in myself. And I remember the the insight I had in that moment was, oh, if people can experience this, that us versus them, that conflict that's within myself and the world around me can be resolved or can be used for a different way of living life. So I got very inspired by that and didn't quite know how to work with it. But many years later, I came to the practice of Brima and Rima really gave me a lot of practical knowledge on how to balance that desire for outer change with that need for inner change in myself and how to harmonize those two. And a lot of what I'm hoping that we can do tonight is support people to really, in a basic down to earth way, experience a step towards the experience of that inner change and really see how that's a step in the direction of also creating outer change. So, yeah. You want to do the first exercise? Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some what we call self dream exercises, which are experiential and you do them with your own body and moving. Um, the, the key is when you do them, do them to the best you can following what Angela and I show you, always remembering that if something's not comfortable or is difficult, work with it a little bit and then you can change it a little, however you want to for your own comfort. The key is really having your attention with your body, not doing the exercise perfectly, that's not possible for most people the first time, but really just staying with your movement, your breath, your weight. And the principles of Brima, which we can get into a little bit, but one of them is no force. So when I'm doing the movements, I don't want to be forcing my body to do something I want to do. I don't want to be pressing. I just want to be working with my natural weight. That's the and doing it more with my whole body. That's a great direction. So we'll start there and see how we go. So this first one is called, um, all of these have names and the names are part of the practice of Rima. So just hear them and let them affect you whatever way they do. This one we're gonna do come to standing. And it's called being with the body, we are supported. So just experience your body standing. Feel the weight of your body on the floor. And then give yourself a slightly wider stance and raise the arms. The palms are facing out 
And just allow yourself to have a slight stretch out through the arms and through the palms of the hands. And experience your body inhaling and exhaling. Allow your hips to be relaxed and just your weight to be supported by the floor beneath. And then on your next exhalation, allow your body to bend forward. The hands come back to back, right above the floor. And then inhaling, bring the hands up the middle of the body. And then lower them down to your sides. And then at the end of the exercise, we always just take a few moments because we're a little bit more um, connected to the body just to register what that experience is. Oh, sorry, Astrid, we're gonna switch back and forth. Yeah, thanks. <clears throat> So this next exercise is um, called Always and Everywhere. We can enter reality by letting go and just start by experiencing the body standing, feet in contact with the floor. Um, we'll do it a couple times so you, you get the hang of it. And I wanted to let you know that we're going to send out, or Astrid will send out at the end of the workshop, some of the simple exercises that we do. So she's going to send those to you so you can practice them at home. The feet come together, and then it's a little jump out, inhaling, stretching up, exhaling. The hands and feet come together, inhaling, jumping out. The hands come together, and the feet come together as the hands come to the sides. And so let's do that again. Just, and just follow along. Mind is with the body. Everything is done with the relaxed weight and body comfortable. Feet come together as the head comes to the sides, and then just taking a moment, the exercise continues. And standing comfortably. So again, the direction agreement is, is harmonizing. It's like tuning an instrument. It's harmonizing the energies of the body, mind, and feelings, beginning with bringing the body and the mind to work together. Matthew. All right, let's do, uh, let's do another self-review. This one you do if you're comfortable sitting kneeling. It's called you are here, don't pretend. So you bring the right hand to the back of the neck and then bring the left hand to hold the right elbow. And then inhale and as you exhale, just allow the body to lean forward towards the left knee. And then inhale, coming back up. And do that several times with your breath. Just let the weight of the body do the leading.
whole body moving as one unit. This time when you come back up, bring your left hand to your right shoulder and your left hand brushes down your right arm as your right arm and hand brush down to your abdomen. And then we'll do that same thing on the left side. And when you're doing this, really let yourself be nurtured by what you're doing. Let your body receive that lean and stretch. And really allow that to be something that is nurturing to you. And supports your attention to be with your movement and activity of your body. You don't have to do anything extra. And then bringing your right hand to your left shoulder, brushing down the left arm with the right hand as the hands reach the abdomen. Then bring your hands, bring them to palm your eyes for a moment, and then brush up the top of your head, down the back of your neck, over your chest, your abdomen. Let the body lean forward, you brush to the lower back, and then down off the knees and do that two more times. Palm in the eyes momentarily and then brushing. The hands are relaxed. One last brush. And then this time when you reach the knees, just let your hands rest on your knees and experience the body sitting and the body moving. Okay, let's stand up. This exercise is called Don't Search. You are in this moment. And so even in the transitions in Brima, going from the floor to standing up, really the, the, the possibility is to just ask the mind, the attention of the mind, rather than looking out what's happening, what's happening, to just to have some of that attention remaining with the body. So I know as I'm getting up, I know when I'm sitting down, and that this little bit of attention staying with the body is the beginning of actually uh, forming a, a cohesive union between my mind, body, and, and feelings. Um, so that I can always, I can always know where I am. Or not always, because I lose it, but I come back to it over and over again. Um, don't search, you are in this moment. So the right hand comes up, the fingers wrap around the thumb. And then you're going to maintain, as we do this, just a comfortable stretch upward. It's just a gentle stretch upward as we begin hopping and breathing. stretching up and hopping
body comfortable. And bring the hopping to a stop, stretching up, and then folding at the waist, letting the body go. And then slowly coming back to standing, the head comes up last. And just experience the body standing. And do what you think. Should we do one more? Yeah, maybe a couple more. Okay, great. This next one is called, you can remain standing. It's called to be unity with all. So let yourself stand comfortably. Bring the fingers so they're interlaced. And allow the chin to just rest on those interlaced fingers for a moment and the arms to rest against your body. And then inhale, raise the hands up and the neck stretches back. And then just continue with the arms, they open up and they come back to that original position. And do that two more times. This time you bring the hands clasped. Allow the forearms to rest on your thighs and just start shifting your weight from side to side so that the forearms lean into the thighs and the feet lean into the floor. And see if you can just Experience the weight of the body shifting. Letting that be the only thing that you're doing right now. And then allow your hands to come palm down the floor in front of you and continue that shifting of the weight this time allowing the hands also support to participate in the way the body shifting. Then bring that rocking back to center Brushing from the feet up to from the legs, hands come back to back of the abdomen, and they open up. And then we're going to brush two more times that same way from the feet. sit down we're going to bring the fingertips into just bring the fingertips together so they're clustered and the feet out in front of you sole to sole if that's comfortable if, if any of these aren't comfortable just adjust them and tap where you can tap we're going to be tapping with the relaxed 
weight of the hands on just around the ankle bone and breathing and see if you can let your body find a rhythm that is, is comfortable and nurturing so much so that your mind is with this that all of you is participating Now the thumbs slide up behind the ball of the big toe and inhaling the body comes up and exhaling forward twice more, inhaling Now the hands brush up the legs to the kidneys and then with the relaxed weight of the hands tapping on the kidneys and brushing now down and off the toes three times come to sitting comfortably I notice that my mind is is, is, is busy and that's okay because the mind is always busy I just noticed that and I have I accept this is what the mind does and I keep inviting my attention back to the activity of the body with acceptance without force just come on back and <clears throat> MT, should we talk a little? I think it'd be a great time, actually, okay. because I had a good question that came alive for me. Which, I don't know, other people may have it, or they may not, which is, why are we doing all these movements and exercises? What does that have to do with being an activist? What's, what's the connection, right? I mean, we have the title to the workshop, Body, Mind, Connection, and the Art of Being an Activist, but maybe we should say something about that. And <clears throat> just in a big picture, and we need a big picture to start with, right? The root cause of all the difficulties, <laughs> all the things we want to change, all the things we sense aren't quite right, the root cause of that is we have taken ourselves to be separated from life. The life that surrounds us, the people that surround us, and even our own bodies. So if we're interested in change or activism, we also have to at some point address this fundamental root misunderstanding of the life we're living. Otherwise, without even knowing it, everything that we do, it comes from that fragmented, separated place. And unfortunately, it doesn't have the right effect. No matter how passionate we are, no matter how much we think we're right, no matter how much energy would it put into it, it comes from, like Angela was saying earlier, a place of separation. So how do we deal with that? How do we balance this desire for outer change with a real sense of something has to also change within us? One thing I think is fantastic about Brema is it's very practical, very down to earth. And it says that the first step to change is actually coming from that separated place to a place of slightly more wholeness. That's why we're doing all these exercises because they give us a practical format to experience what actually happens 
when we change our level a little bit, rather than just being in the mind or being in that reactive state, to come to the active state, which is when our attention comes to the body. We're not focusing on sensations. That's not what body-mind connection is. Body-mind connection is when our attention is just with the knowing the body's breathing, the body has weight, the body's talking right now, the body has this movement. And the mind's not describing, it's just registering that activity. It's very simple, but when you have it, you know it. And that creates a different experience. That's the first change. We come from that place of pure separation to a slightly more um, whole place in ourselves. So this is how the inner change begins to also reflect outer change is we become a little bit different. We actually experience what life is in connection rather than just separation. And without that, everything that we do, unfortunately, doesn't have the right effect. So we have to balance the inner and the outer. We have to bring them into harmony. And really, that's coming from that reactivism that Angela was talking about to activism. And we could always, no matter what's going on, no matter where we are, no matter how difficult the situation is, if we have that as a framework for ourselves, we can see, oh, there's always one simple step I can take in that direction of wholeness. And that's the key. doesn't matter what's going on. We can always move from passive to active, and then from active to receptive. And in that receptivity, there's a lot that's possible in terms of affecting change in the world around us. Angela, you want to say anything to that? Yeah, really just this, um, what we're really talking about is the relationship. The relationship of parts to the whole. And so beginning with something that exists that already I can experience as whole. And so I'm not talking about at the conceptual, I'm not talking about any ideas about my, my body, but coming to the body or what Matthew was talking about, coming to the knowledge or the direct experience of having a body while I'm sitting here. There's something in me that actually directly experiences the body sitting, that directly experiences the breathing. So I'm talking, I can hear my tone of voice, I can, I know that, that I, that this body is sitting here and that it's breathing. So I come from fragmentation to something that I can experience as more whole. And that's the direction, the part in relationship to the whole. When I'm just in my mind, which this morning I had an experience of, um, someone called me, they were very upset. I had just been doing some self prima. They were very upset with something that I had done that I didn't know I had done. Um, and lately, I, I really got to say, I've been seeing that human interaction, both internally, both what I'm experiencing in myself, what I'm experiencing in my relationships with other people, and what I'm then hearing about in the news and seeing in the world is just this kind of very fragmented, splitting apart. And um, so this person called me, they were very upset. And how do I know my body and mind are connected? Because when, when, when something gets thrown at me, or something comes at me from my own mind or my own feelings, I'm in reaction, something someone says to me from without comes at me, I am not immediately taking that energy and giving it back. But I'm I'm actually connected enough, I'm present enough with myself, with the body, I can either step aside and let that go by, or sometimes I even can actually receive, as I did in, in this exchange this morning, receive what this person had to say, take it, and then 
return something a little bit more harmonizing, a little bit more whole, because that's the, the state I was in in myself. And so when we talk about wanting to, to, to stand or see or experience something more unified or more, more whole outside of us, again, as Matthew was saying, that that begins in my relationship with myself. And then it's very simple because I have this body, it's always breathing. The body makes it, this body-mind connection makes it very simple to kind of know where I am on the map and to take a step in the direction of unifying myself. Matthew, any more? Or shall we do some more self prima? Well, there's a lot more, but that's probably, that's probably good. And if there's questions later about the practice that we're talking about, people. Why don't, why don't we do a couple more self prima and then let people go into sm to small groups. We're going to have you go into some small groups. We're going to give you a question to work with, and then we'll come back and then have uh, some questions and relate to each other a little bit and do a few more exercises. But why don't we do two more exercises before we do that? Great. Good? Great. This exercise is called Being Present is Total Fulfillment. So the hands are loosely fisted and we're going to jump. And as we jump, we're going to just strike. There's a soft, fleshy part just inside the shoulder blade with the relaxed weight of the hands. Tapping. And the body's breathing. The right hand comes to the heart, the left hand in back, and just brushing. Every movement uh, in Brima is done with the whole body. Now the hand switch places, right hand in the back, left hand in the front, and brushing for three breaths. Both hands come into the front of the body, brushing down to the sides and off. Once more. And this time, all the way down, back up the front, and experiencing the weight of the arms as they come down to the sides. So if you can sit comfortably kneeling, this one is done kneeling. You could also sit on a chair for this exercise or on the floor with your legs crossed, whatever is comfortable for you. It's called breath begins in the prime source. And we're going to be working with just what we call lean, hold, release in Brima, which is really one continuous movement but it's when your weight leans in, comes to a place of being supported by your own body, you a dynamic hold, and then you slowly release. So we're gonna do that many times in this exercise and just see if you can work with that process. Lean, hold, and release. Three different parts of one continuous movement. So you take your left hand, and you place it on your low back kidney area and you bring your right hand up to the neck shoulder junction and just let your weight of your body come forward and some of that weight gets transferred into your hand and you hold and then release as you come up. 
and then move your hand a little closer to your shoulder. Just finding that your own natural rhythm with that. When you come to the shoulder joint, then you bring the left hand to rest right on top of your abdomen. So the palm is right over your belly button and then continue leaning down the arm. This time, some of the weight gets transferred into the hand on the abdomen. But just doing it with the whole body. Don't need to use any force because force just creates separation and separation is that root cause of the disease. So we want to see if we can let go of force and work with whole body and whole mind. Then brushing from the shoulder off the fingertips three times. And then bringing the right hand on the low back and repeat that on the other side. Think if you can do this without using any force, just work with your body's weight, and experience how your weight is supported by your own body. We call that mutual support. Bringing the hand to the abdomen when you reach the shoulder joint. your own hand, then brushing from the shoulder three times. And then both hands brushing down to the knees. So, so, so Astrid, Matthew, do you have a question? We were going to ask people a question and then go on into breakout rooms and have a little conversation with people in the breakout room and then come on back and we'll have a larger discussion. We'll do some questions in the larger group. Yeah. Well, I mean, one question that people could work with if it's alive for them is, what is the role of the body in activism? That's one question. Also, if something else has come alive for you that you want to bring up in this in the breakout rooms, that's also totally appropriate. What is the, what is the role of the body in activism? Also, how how do you how do you unify yourself? How do you work with that? Welcome back, everyone. Thank you for your being here. And uh, now is the time for Q&A. So um, for those of you whose video is still up, feel free to turn it on to make it even more welcoming for Angela and Matthew to see everyone. Um, different ways of voicing your questions. You can raise your hand, unmute yourself, and tell your question to the space. So you can use the chat, and I will be reading the questions for Angela and Matthew. Thanks again for being here. I see two questions in the chat, um, Matthew, Angela. The first question is from Jen. And um, the question is, when do you actually do this embodiment experiment? When do you do it? Is that the question? Yeah. And do you want to say something about that? 
Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll say something and then uh, you can take over. Um, well, hi Jen. So we do the exercises. I I I practice uh, the exercises every day. Um, there are classes of people practicing these together every day, and the and the direction of it is to practice via the exercises. We're actually practicing principles, the principles of like body comfortable, no force, no extra, uh, mutual support. So to get this experience of harmony in the body, the mind and body together, there's an actual, what we call a taste or an experience of that. And it's not something that you just get, you might have had a little bit of it tonight, but it's not something that you get automatically. That's the other thing about Rima. It's, it's about moving us out of kind of the automatic, mechanical, habitual what patterns and ways that we move into uh, being more present. And so, and so practicing it uh, in the classes, at home, I then have the possibility of doing things in my life, driving my car, having a conversation with someone, washing my dishes that via practicing these exercises on my own, that at moments out in the world, in my life, I actually can come to that experience of being present or more unified in myself and that that atmosphere can go with me onto my day. So really it's a practice. And then the practice is that I get it into my body and I can take it into to the everyday activities of my life. MT? Yeah, I only would just say to add what Angela said that um, it's a practice that we do to make ourselves familiar with what it is to know there's a body. Once we have that knowing there is a body, then anywhere we are in life, we have that reference point for something that um, we can come to and we can be supported by. So really, there's the practice, but really the, the fruit of the practice is to have that come alive for us and to remember that as we go throughout our day so that we move through the world in a more unified way, in a more harmonious way. I mean, I use it in my, in my psychotherapy practice. I'm often using it in the grocery store when I'm standing in these long lines now. I'll just stand there, I'll experience. My body has feet. I know I'm experiencing the weight of my body, my feet. And then often, uh, wherever, I mean, because we're lining up everywhere now. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes I even remember in conversation with people and I can hear my tone of voice. I, I remember, oh, come back to myself and drop down into that body-mind connection. And then I know my, my exchange with that person is a little bit more harmonious. Can I ask a follow-up question? Sure. Uh, mainly the movements that we've done, like we just did, is kind of big to do outside. Like how, how do you stay grounded or connected when you're actually activated outside? Well, there's, there's something that we say, okay, I get your question. Hi, Jen. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, so if I understand your question, so when I'm activated out in the world, what I can do is I actually, I, I, if I see that I'm activated, this possibility of body-mind connection, I'll, I'll take a breath. I'll experience my weight. I often come to experience my body having feet. So, so again, doing, practicing the exercises, I practice them at home, but what it gives me a, is a reference point for connecting to my body so that when I'm out in the world and something happens, that I have much more possibility of taking care of myself. So I'll see, oh, I'm in an activated state. I might like, if I'm with other people, I might use, just use common sense and step away and then I know that if I actually can come, if I can bring my mind to my breath and experience the weight of the body, like we did in that meditation in the beginning, I can come to the body having feet. Sometimes I'll just brush, I'll do some kind of brushing with my whole body. I'll do some of the movements, so I don't do the whole exercise. Sometimes I'll rub my palms, I'll do a part of the movement. I'll bring my palms to my eyes, we did that tonight and brush it's just a way to collect myself to come back to the body 
And that can often just bring me back to a much more balanced state. And so the exercises, again, really are the vehicle to practice getting a taste of body-mind connection, getting a taste of the principles. And then when I'm out in life and out in the world, I'm not... Actually, sometimes when I'm in the movie theater, I'll do one of the... sneak a little exercise in the bathroom. Back in the day when we had movie theaters that we could go to. But usually it's much more simple than that. It's usually coming to my weight and my breath. Um, doing a brush on my arm. Sometimes I'll just put my hand on my hara or my heart and it'll, it'll remind me to come back to my body, to collect myself. And this is really uh, very useful in what you call being activated, uh, coming out of that activated state and, and coming to a more balanced state. Mm -hmm. Is that useful for you, Jen? Yeah, it sounds like it's uh, at home, we could find a, uh, like a baseline for our experiences mm -hmm. so that when we go outside we know what's the baseline to go back to yes it's like you start to build this internal scaffolding or reference point of what is that what's that taste of being in balance mm -hmm. and that, that it doesn't take quite as much to come to it once i know the way there yeah yeah thank you mt i don't know there's much more to add i really feel like i saw one of the other questions too which is about um if a people practice this or if they work with it as a group, then how is it useful for them in a protest or a demonstration? I saw that one of the questions too. And I kind of dovetails on what Angela was saying is that when, when we're in that um, reactive place, when we're only operating from one part of ourselves, we're drained by life. But when we bring the body and the mind together, that that drainage stops. We feel our energy become more collected and <clears throat> we're different. Our energy is different. Our atmosphere is different. And then if we stay with that and we come to a place of receptivity, which means we experience a direct connection with life then whatever we're doing, doesn't matter if it's protesting, talking, walking, eating, that gives us energy. And so what, 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 what we need to do is we need to resolve the conflict within ourselves to be useful and helpful in the world. And if we can't do that, if we're protesting or demonstrating or talking or fighting, whatever that is, we're not really benefiting from the experience. We're not really in life. So, um, to be an activist really, and to take that active role, I think the point of what we're getting at is it's something that we have to do within ourselves to make that really, really um, congruent. So that outer and the inner peace as I'm working with my desire for change and to create um, impact in the world, I have to always just keep checking back in, how am I? We have this thing in Brima, which is, the emphasis is, isn't on what I'm doing, but how I am when I'm doing that thing. And believe it or not, that's the change. That's the change. Any, anything in life that I experience, and this happens to me all the time, so it's not like I've now transcended this, which is why I need this practice, but that anything in life that I experience myself being separate from, I'm afraid of. And if that thing is confronting me and that thing feels separate from me, then there's a possibility for harm, you know? And, 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 and part of why I actually really got into this practice is because I saw that feeling closed up and separate from everything, I walked through my life being very afraid of other people and being very afraid of life. Um, a, a lot of that exists within my own mind, in my own feelings, in my own body. If I, if, I, if I can move in the direction of seeing that, the first thing is just to see that I'm closed up and I'm afraid. And then I have a direction that I can move in. I accept that. Okay, I'm afraid right now. And so I need to take care of myself. And how I know to do that is to move from this fragmented uh, place where I'm in parts to a more unified, more whole relationship with myself. And as soon as I do that with myself, that's the relationship I'm going to be having with life around me. 
is going to be more in the direction of wholeness and more in the direction of being unified. So it's, it's really that, it's like radio waves. The part can only talk as a part, but as soon as I can connect to something more whole, I have the possibility of not reacting at that same level, but actually participating a little more harmoniously. Tell, tell you, us, Angela. Yes. Thank are you. Are you shutting us down now? <laughs> I'm seeing the time run. <laughs> but I feel hesitant because I want to continue listening. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, do you feel complete where you were? I, just I, 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 am, I am complete. Let me say one other thing. This, yeah. is, this, is, this is not a, a thing to do. You got this one night, you did it one time. It's not like, uh, you know, uh, it's not like a cup of noodles, pour hot water, eat the noodles, you're done, throw it away, you're good. This is, this is something that you, pra you practice and, and this coming to the body, connecting to the body, connecting to the breath. Every day of the week, there are, there's a, there are free classes at brima.com of people doing this practice. And, and so the, the idea is that you practice it at home. And so when you go out into the world, you can practice it simply remembering, come to the body, connect to the body, be with the body, not just in the mind, not just in the feelings, but bringing the body and mind together. Um, and Matthew and I are doing a whole series. It's, I think it's like nine or 10 weeks. Um, and, and I think uh, Astrid will send you some information about that. But thank you, thank you, and thank you. Astrid? Yeah, thank you so much, Angela. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, and thank you for the questions, uh, Tara, Tom, I saw you have questions. Hopefully, you can follow Angela and Matthew. I'm also going to put their email address here in the chat for you to um, keep up with them. This is very beautiful work. I've been very touched by the idea of going from parts to whole and reactivism to activism. Um, so here we go. I'm putting Angela's and then Matthew's um, email in the chat, making sure this is accurate. Here we go. So it's Angela Porter MFT at gmail.com and Matthew toussignan at gmail.com. The resource that Angela mentioned is brima.com also, and they will have free offerings during the time of election. Um, in order to support uh, the Brima Center, East Point is going to be redirecting half of the funds uh, to the center and half of the funds that you offer to us tonight will go to East Point. Many of you are probably familiar with um, the little presentation that we offer to everyone every time we have a workshop around the gift economy. The reason why this workshop happened tonight is because other people paid it forward for us to be here tonight. They paid it forward. They liked the contents that East Point has offered at the time they took a workshop enough to be like, yes, I want to donate so that this can continue. And this is our, actually, this is our economy model. Uh, so the gift economy. And um, there are seven principles for this, which are generosity, access, intervention, equity, transparency, interdependence, and faith. Uh, faith. We rely on the faith that people will continue supporting us. And in the spirit of transparency, we also make all our um, expenses available to the public on our website. And you can see that last year, out of $120,000, almost $100,000 were donated by our community. So we're very grateful for the support. Um, we, we serve both the general public and incarcerated communities. We bring healing practicing and healing circles and nonviolence practices to incarcerated people in normal times. Right now, our programs are shut down, unfortunately, but they will start again when COVID quarantine is over. And in order to illustrate the spirit of gift economy, really, we ask to just give what your heart calls for. So if you want to give us love and prayers, please do. If you want to give us a dollar, please do. If you want to give us a hundred dollars, please do. And you can see from what's on the screen when giving is done out of pure joy, you can't tell who the giver is and who the recipient is. 
And this is really what we want. We just want you to feel joy in your heart uh, as you donate and support us. So the link for this particular work workshop to make sure that uh, the Brima Center uh, receives your donation, have a good donation, you can go to eastpointpeace.org slash Angela Matthew donate. And so, yes, so thank you. Hi again. My name is Astrid. I'm part of East Point. I am a core member at East Point. Um, as you may or may not know, this uh, workshop is part of a bigger action that we are organizing for the election. We're right now in a period of um, training together, so we're preparing together. And the 25th, there will be a period of deepening together where there will be offerings every single week. And it's also a time for people to prepare and put together in what we call team with people you trust to be able to, if you want to have an action, if something happens during the election, be with people you trust, be with people that you can practice what, for example, Angela and Matthew brought to us tonight. So if you're planning on making a team, it can be very informal, just people you trust, you can let us know at eastpointpeace.org slash teams, uh, November teams, sorry. And Eastpoint also brings uh, to get, brought together some practices that teams um, can practice together at this link. And yes, I am going to post the donation link in the chat right when I'm done. Oh, yes, no, thank you. Um, so yeah, thank you. That's all for me. I will give it back to you, Angela and Matthew. Angela, you want to do one last self prima? What should oh, we do? Sure. Oh, sure. Um, everybody, let's stand up. This exercise is called Truth Truth Uproots All Our Confusion. So the knees are slightly bent, the body's planted uh, in your center of gravity, the hands are loosely fisted, right over left, and this is deliberate inhaling and exhaling. Hands open and come together. Again, inhaling. Exhaling. As the hands uh, reach the abdomen, they come on top of each other. The foot comes closer to the body, brushing up, opening out. Hands come to the kidneys, brushing down to the back of the knees, around to the front. And the arms just open now to the sides. And standing comfortably. Okay, MT. Okay, thank you everyone so much. We're going to end this evening with a body center meditation. So just find a comfortable place to sit, wherever that is for you, and allow your eyes to close. And just experience your body sitting and your body breathing. And without describing it, just let yourself register how you are in this moment. Right now. What we're looking for exists in the moment, we are alive, we are part of one whole existence. When we have that experience, we have an active relationship 
tonight. When you hear the sound of the gong, allow your eyes to open slowly and see for a few seconds if you can just keep your gaze unfocused. Thank you so much. Thank you, Astrid. Thank you, everyone who participated. Uh, I'm with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for making it tonight. Have a good night, and hopefully, we'll see you in Brima spaces. <laughs> <laughs> thank thank you. you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to unmute yourself to thank Angela yes. and Matthew. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thank, thank you.